So this year for Thanksgiving, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and I'm actually gonna make a portobello mushroom wellington. So it's like a puff pastry with portobello mushrooms and spinach and um, some spices in it. And I hope it comes out really amazing. I'm gonna put it together now and let's see how it comes together, but it should make a great Thanksgiving dish. We're gonna start with a cast iron skillet that we're gonna put a little oil in. We're gonna cook up a few ingredients that are gonna go inside of our puff pastry. And that's what's really gonna give it that body. But we'll cook these things in advance just to make sure that everything's nice and thoroughly cooked and comes together really well. So we'll start off with about a couple of onions here. I think I've got about two onions that I'm putting together. Two good sized onions. I decided to use red onions because I thought that the red color would be nice inside of it, but you could use pretty much any onion you like. So we're gonna let these cook for a bit, probably about five or 10 minutes while they just start to brown up a little bit. They're gonna get a little bit translucent, they're gonna change color a little bit, and they're gonna get really flavorful. You're gonna smell some onion cooking and it just smells delicious. So this is about the texture we're looking for, the color we're looking for. As soon as I think they're done, I'm gonna put them into a bowl and set them aside for now because we'll use them later when we actually start preparing the, the dough. So this is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and take them off and uh, we'll move on from here. So I'm just gonna drop these in here and then I'll put them in the fridge for a while just to st start cooling down so I can use them later. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pan back on the stove and I'm gonna wilt some spinach. I have about four cups of spinach here that I'm using, so I'm gonna have to do this in batches. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the spinach in there, let it cook down a little bit, and then I'll remove it from the heat as well and throw it in the fridge. So I'm just gonna continue to cook the spinach until it's all uh, cooked up and then it's ready to go. As you can see, I've got rather a lot of it here and it does take a little bit of time to do this. It's not hard, it just takes a minute or two. I'll put it into a bowl when I'm ready, go ahead and get the pan ready again, throw the next batch in and just keep going from there until everything's ready. Once these are all cooked down and they're wilted, it's like the perfect texture to have inside of the, the pastry that'll really make it very nice. All right, and all of my spinach is ready. This is all just gonna sit here for a little while. Like I said, I'll just put it over in the fridge for a bit just to cool down, and then I'll be able to use it later. I'm gonna put some more oil in the pan because now it's time to actually turn to the portobello mushrooms. I've got four large portobello mushrooms. Actually, I have three large ones and two smaller ones, so I have five mushrooms. You can use as many as you like. I wanted to have a lot of texture, so I, bought, I have five of them that I'm putting in here. What I'm gonna do is put them in the pan and let them cook until that side gets brown, and they get soft and they release some of their liquid. It's gonna take a few minutes. You can't rush this process. You have to just let them sit for a little while. And then finally, they'll soften up and they'll be the right texture to use in my dish. So I'll go ahead and take them off now that they're sort of browned on one side and they're sort of soft. I'll take them off and put them into a bowl and store those for later as well. I just wanna keep everything nice and cool because when I put my puff pastry together, I want the cool ingredients inside it. So I'll just go ahead and take these off. And I'll repeat this process until each one of these is cooked to about the same degree. As you can see through the time lapse here, you can kind of see it melting down a little bit and becoming nice and soft. And it's releasing its liquid, which is exactly what we're looking for. So as soon as that's ready, I'll go ahead and take it off as well and throw it in the fridge. Then I'll wait about an hour or so and I'll start with my puff pastry. This puff pastry I picked up at Trader Joe's, but you can get puff pastries a lot of different places, or you could go ahead and make your own. If you wanted to make this vegan, you could actually make it with some different ingredients and leave out the butter and make something that's very similar that would work pretty well. It's really your call on how you wanna work with it. I just thought this was one of the easiest ways to do it. So to get this prepared, what I did was went ahead and put some onions down. I used about half the onions and laid them in a row across the dough so that I could uh, start to get sort of a, uh, a row going on this. So that's about half of them that I put on there at this point. 
And then as soon as I've got them kind of laid out and I've got them ready, I'll start putting the spinach on. So the spinach is gonna go on top of this. It's gonna be a layered dish, right? You want it to come together in sort of a layer. And now that I have my spinach on here, I'm ready to start putting some spices in. Now the thing I wanna use is Dijon mustard. And I know this seems like an odd combination. It's onions, spinach, portobellos, and Dijon mustard, but it actually works really, really well. It's a nice flavor combination that comes together. Now, if you wanted to use a different kind of mustard or maybe not mustard at all, some other aioli that you have, some other sauce that you have that you like, you could certainly do that. I'm, I'm recommending the Dijon because I think it worked really well. Now I'm gonna take the portobellos and put them on. Now, something I learned after I made the dish was I probably should have cut the portobellos into smaller pieces so that they would have actually, that would have been easier to slice the final product. Leaving them whole like this made it a little bit complicated to work with when I went to cut it. So that's just one little tip that I learned as I was making this. I'd never made this before and it never really worked with puff pastry before, so kind of interesting. But it was a neat way to do this and it actually came together pretty well. You can see the mushrooms are still kind of liquidy and that's fine, that's just the nature of mushrooms. Now I'm gonna add a sprinkle of thyme as this is a Thanksgiving dish. I wanna have a little thyme in there because it kind of brings together that fall flavor. And then I'll finish layering my dish. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more spinach and then the last layer of onion on top of that. So then it'll be all finished up and I can actually work with it and start to fold it up together. So it, it goes onions, spinach, mushrooms, spinach, onions. And that way it's kind of got a textural a visual when you go through it that actually looks really nice once you cut it. So I'll go ahead and finish uh, assembling this and getting it ready. Now this is really thick. It's kind of like folding a burrito that's really full, right? Where you're just gonna take it over and start folding it. Now this, this is very pliable. These uh, pep pastries really are pretty forgiving. Uh, in retrospect, I could have done it a little differently. Maybe I could have moved it on the pan a little bit. Maybe I could have stretched the puff pastry just a little more before I started. But what I wanted to do was kind of bring it together, crimp the ends, and then fold it over so the seam was on the bottom. Now, maybe I could have done a better job and it would have been a little cleaner. Maybe it would have looked a little nicer. But I think overall, for our first time working with a puff pastry and trying to get this together, even though I struggled to try and make sure that it came together, it worked out pretty well. I came up with a pretty nice design on it and it looks pretty good when it's finished. decided I wanted to score it a little bit so it would have a little bit of texture to it when I cooked it. Unfortunately, using this chopstick that way, even though it makes little indentations there, it didn't really come through in the final products because the puff pastry rose a little bit. So I'd have to rethink how I did that to make it work just right. One tip I got was to actually take it and take it to the freezer now for about 10 minutes, then bring it out, then do this texturing, then put it back in the freezer for about 10 minutes. It's a tip that I learned afterwards and it might work, so I might try it the next time I do it. Next up, I'm gonna put an egg wash on it just to give it, make sure it browns up nicely. So I'll go ahead and uh, cover it with some eggs. I have one egg in this cup and I just have a little pastry brush that I'm using to put it on there. And that's it. It's ready to go in the oven now. Looks pretty good to start with. Now I'm gonna get it in the oven. The oven's set to about 375 degrees and I've got it in for about 30 minutes. 
You could might have a little bit of difference when you cook it. You might need to leave it in for another couple of minutes. I probably could have. You can see there's a little liquid that leaked out. So again, back to that idea of the mushrooms being a little bit watery at that point, I probably could have drained them off a little better and come up with something a little better. But overall, I'm very satisfied with the way this came out. It looks beautiful and it tasted fantastic. So I highly recommend my own Mushroom Wellington.